Welcome to a tour of the John Miller Burnham Classics Library at the University of Cincinnati. I'm Rebecca Lindau, the head of the library. We begin with a look at the exterior of the Blagan Library building, which houses the Classics Library and is named after the legendary classical archaeologist Carl Blagan, who was professor here from 1927 to 1957. The UC Main Library, as it was known in those days, opened in June 1930. The simple exterior is broken up by sculptures rich with symbolic meaning. References to classical antiquity abound. Below the fifth floor windows in the two pylons, for example, are rather large sculptured panels. The north pylon features a panel depicting Euclid with a geometric pyramid in his hand, Homer with his lyre, Phidias with a model of his statue of Athena, Plato and Herodotus. Below are the words ex occidente lux, light from the west. That on the south pylon represents the east, featuring the Akkadian ruler Sargon, Pharaoh Cheops or Khufu, seated with the model of his pyramid tomb in his lap, the Babylonian king Hammurabi, who established the law code carrying his name, the Persian king Darius with a model of the Behistun inscription, crucial to the decipherment of cuneiform writing, and Byzantine or Eastern Roman Emperor Justinian with the volume of the Corpus Juris Civilis in his arm. Below are carved the words Ex Oriente Lux, light from the east. Now let's go inside. The Classics Department is located next door to the library and in the lobby there is currently a modern sculpture by Tom Tsuchiya, a Classics alumnus and local artist representing the mythological character Atlas holding up the globe, the Atlas of the world. The first floor of the library features the circulation desk and workstations to access the library catalog and databases to which the library subscribes, such as La Nefilusik, Thesaurus Lingua Graecae, Lob Classical Library, Biblioteca Togneriana Latina, Thesaurus Lingua Latinae, and Diabola, in addition to many of the Cambridge journals and companions, the Oxford Handbooks and JSTOR. There is also a scanner with an overhead camera to better protect our books. We also do not allow food or drink in the library for the same reason. And an area with recent unbound journal issues, and a reference section on the mezzanine with major text editions such as the Teubner text and the Oxford Classical text. The Boudet text and Mondadori Scrittori Greci Latini and many other editions are currently located in the stacks. On the first floor of the library is also the main reading room, featuring a portrait of John Miller Burnham himself, UC Professor of Latin and Paleography from 1900 to his death in 1921. Above, a sample of his own personal library of approximately 3,400 volumes, which formed the foundation of the contemporary library's collections. He is holding a copy of the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which is the same copy as is on display in the case. These ornamental books were not intended to be read in this life, but to accompany the deceased on her or his travels in the afterlife. The couple seen here are Anna Louise Taft, niece of President Taft, and her husband, William Semple, UC Professor of Classics from 1910 to 1950, and chair of the department after the death of Burnham in 1921. Louis Taft Sample bequeathed a large donation to the university, also to the Classics Department, which now funds almost all library acquisitions. Funding provided by the samples also supported the landmark excavations at Troy and Pylos, and continues to fund a number of current UC excavations around the Mediterranean. UC's library history in classics is long and distinguished. In fact, the first two deans or university librarians of UC were professors of ancient Greek philology. In 1892, William Everett Waters, and in 1894, Frederick Leopold Schoenle. In the reading room are also featured various exhibitions, books along with artifacts to illustrate our charge to represent the text culture as well as the material culture of classical antiquity. One example of collections in context is this current exhibition, which highlights pottery from and books on Magna Grecia, the areas of southern Italy and Sicily colonized by settlers from Greece from the 8th through the 4th century BCE. Another display features Linear B tablets, the writing of which proved to be an early form of Greek, in part thanks to the many clay tablets discovered by Blagan at Pylos, which were instrumental in British architect Michael Ventris's eventual decipherment of the script. A future exhibition will feature the stratigraphy of Troy, the city of the Iliad, which German archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann set out to discover, excavations that Blagan continued from 1932 to 1938. 
Another smaller exhibition will be of Mycenaean so-called Tau, Psi, and Phi figurines from the archives of the Classics Department. We are also currently highlighting our oversized book collection. These are some particularly exquisite examples from Pompeii featuring many of its frescoes, which can also be enjoyed on the walls of the reading room, from Villa dei Misteri and Villa Ariana in Stabiae, a town near Pompeii, also destroyed by the eruption of Vesuvius in 79. The first act floor houses classical philology, Greek and Latin language and literature, including individual author texts, commentaries, and other critical treatments. Or there is also a map collection featuring, for example, this gem of the map of Willem Döpfelt, the excavator of Troy after Schliemann from 1893 to 1894, and of the Athenian Acropolis from 1885 to 1890, with his own signature. The UC Classics collection is one of the foremost such collections in the world, with its more than 270,000 print volumes, spanning all areas of classical antiquity. Although our collections heavily favor the print medium, we are currently expanding our digital resources, including of our own unique holdings. The library's collecting in all areas of classical studies aims at comprehensiveness, but the collections in Near Eastern archaeology and languages, Sumerian, Akkadian, Assyrian, Hittite, cuneiform writing, etc., and literatures also greatly benefit from the close proximity of Hebrew Union College down the street from the university, to which our community has full access, as well as from our membership in Ohio Link, a reciprocal borrowing system of library materials among institutions in Ohio, such as Ohio State and Oberlin College. The second stack floor houses Greek and Roman history, including Byzantium and modern Greece, as well as bound older journals. The library also owns a large number of unique 19th century modern Greek journals, a collection which was considered a must-see for even Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip, who was of Greek heritage, in connection with the possible UC visit for when the Queen came to Chicago in June of 1959. The last stack floor farthest down in the library houses all other subjects in the Library of Congress classification scheme, such as philosophy, religion, epigraphy, numismatics, paleography, science and medicine and a section of more than 600 very large books, so-called elephant folios. Collections of note include some 18,000 German dissertations, chiefly from the 19th century, and a large paleography collection comprising of a number of facsimiles of medieval manuscripts, many of them illustrated and various handbooks for the study of letter forms. For example, this exquisite facsimile of Ptolemy's Cosmographia, a treatise on cartography describing the geographic knowledge of the second century. Another facsimile is of the Joshua Roll, Le Joshua Roll, a scroll housed in the Biblioteca Apostolica Vaticana and dated to the 9th century. It's a scroll of pictorial representations attached to two wooden rollers, with text from the Septuaginta and scenes from the Book of Joshua. Other for our collection more unusual facsimiles include the Book of Kells and the Lindisfarne Gospels. Our library also possesses some 3,500 rare books and manuscripts, including several incunables, for example a 1496 Diodorus Siculus, a 1497 Tacitus, and a 1499 Eusephus edition. On each stack floor there are tables on which to consult books and to take notes, and iPads to check references in the library's catalogue. The last room on our tour is the space for our graduate students and recipients of the prestigious Titus Fellowship in Classics, who along with UC faculty usually constitute quite an international group, currently representing Greece, Italy, Serbia, the Netherlands, Spain, Germany and Colombia, in addition to several American states. The Classics Library's branding used on web headers and signs depict coins of the Athenian owl, the Strix, representing wisdom and knowledge of the owl herself and of the goddess Athena. 
Western monology hopefully gained from reading the library's books and of the she-wolf, the lupa, suckling the twin founders of Rome, Romulus and Remus, representing the library's second charge of providing a nurturing and inviting library environment, including a helpful staff. Student workers, which we hope you might consider becoming once you join the UC Classics community, Kate Stevens, the Circulation and Student Worker Supervisor, and Mike Brownland, the bibliographer who has worked here for 40 years and no doubt has many interesting anecdotes to tell, including about raucous ghosts in the classic stacks. Yes, legend has it that the Blagan Library is haunted. Ghosts have been seen and heard in the stacks of the Classics Library and in the Rare Book Library on the top floor. They appear to be friendly ghosts, though, even laughing. One rumor even claims that one of the ghosts is a former grad student who never finished his dissertation which could serve as a cautionary tale. Mike has also worked with several distinguished classicists over the years, including a GN Bronze Age specialist, John Kasky. Mike, what can you tell us about Kasky, for example? Well, many years after Professor Kasky's death in 1981, I attended a lecture that talked about his World War II career. Uh, this lecture was at a meeting of the Modern Greek Studies Association in Chicago. I was astonished to learn there that Professor Kasky had played a very dramatic role in the OSS uh, division in the Second World War. Although as we were friends here at UC, he never ever talked about his, uh, his clandestine activities. It was really James Bond type stuff. Uh, in fact, he only told me one incident about the war, and he said that uh, he saved the life of a dog. Uh, it happened in this way. Uh, Professor Kasky got to know some German soldiers who manned a guard post somewhere in Greece. They had a guard dog that was so fierce they were afraid that it might break away from them and possibly harm a child, so they were going to kill the dog. Professor Kasky, being a dog lover, a pet lover, uh, requested that they give him the dog, and they did so, and he went on to keep the dog for the next six to seven years. He said it was one of the best pets he had ever had, and that simple story was what he told me was the best thing he had ever done in the Second World War. Uh, he was a very special guy. Thank you.